Hi guys, this is Sadiq from Dragon.com and in this video, we'll show you how to flash the latest MIUI Reborn ROM onto your POCO F4. So, let's get started. Please take a backup of all the data on your phone and then let's proceed ahead. So, first off, you have to install Android SDK platform tools. This is the optional editing binary given by Google and is required to execute ADB command. So, download it from the link given in my guide and extract them onto your PC. You can extract them anywhere you want and these are the files of the platform tools folder as you could see. So, extract them on your PC. And then you have to move to the next step and now enable USB debugging and OEM unlocking. USB debugging is required to execute ADB command, whereas OEM unlocking is required to unlock the booter on your phone. So let's now carry out both this task. For that, go to the settings menu. From settings menu, go to about phone and tap on MIUI version seven times. You will get the prompt that you are now a developer. So now go back, again go back, now go to additional settings. Then you should now see developer option, go there and Enable the toggle next to OEM unlocking as well as USB debugging. You will get a prompt on your phone. So check mark I am aware of the risk. And now you have to wait for 10 seconds. Once the time frame has elapsed, just tap on OK. And you will now get an RSE key fingerprint prompt as well. So tap on OK. And with this, debugging is now enabled. So let's now verify the debugging connection. So go to platform tools folder on your PC, type in CMD in the address bar and hit enter. This will launch the command prompt window inside the platform tools folder as you could see. So now type in ADB devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you are not getting any ID, then unplug and replug your phone from the PC. Disable and re-enable USB debugging. Tap on revoke USB debugging. Use the official USB cable that came with your phone and use the USB 2.0 port on your PC. So carry out these USB tweaks and make sure you are getting an ID. Once you are getting this ID, your next course of action is to unlock the bootloader on your phone. Do know that unlocking the bootloader will wipe off all the data and it might make the warranty null and void as well. So if that's well and good, you could refer to my guide or the video and make sure to unlock the bootloader using the optional me unlock tool. Let me just show you. So this is my, the video and this is the entire guide. Once you've unlocked the bootloader, it will remove all the data and your phone will then boot to the OS. Once your phone boot to the OS, make sure to re-enable USB debugging on your phone. Once you have re-enabled debugging, let's now move ahead to the next step. So next step, we now have to download the latest MIUI Reborn ROM. So regarding this, I could not find the official source. So I was able to find a Google Drive link. I could not verify the authenticity of this link. So please proceed ahead at your own risk. If you know of the official link of this ROM, you are free to let me know as well. But this is not the official link. But still, I flashed this ROM and it's working well and good. So download the ROM from this link or any link of your choice. If you have a trusted link, download the ROM from there and place the link inside the place the ROM inside the platform tool folder on your PC. So as you could see, this is the ROM zip file inside the platform tool folder. So once you have got the ROM file, your next course of action is to install the PWRP recovery onto your phone. So I have made a guide and a video on the same. Let's now install the recovery onto a phone. You could also refer to my video or let's proceed ahead and install the recovery file. For that, you have to download the recovery from the official link. So go to the official link and then from here, you have to just download the IMG file. So grab hold of the IMG file and place it inside the platform tool folder on your PC. So as you could see, this is the recovery IMG file. So we will now be flashing this recovery file onto our phone. For that, you now have to boot your phone to passboot mode. So for booting our phone to passboot mode, you just have to use the ADB command. So open CMD window inside platform tool folder. And now type in ADB, reboot, bootloader and hit enter. Your phone should now boot to passboot mode and it will only take a few seconds. So let's wait for the time frame and then we will move ahead with the next step. So our phone should now boot to the password mode in a matter of few seconds. So it's now in the password mode. Let's now verify the password connection. So type in password devices and hit enter. Make sure you are getting a serial ID. If you're not getting any ID, then you will have to install the password drivers on your PC. So I have made a guide and a video on the same. You could refer to my guide or the video and make sure to install the password drivers. Once you've installed the drivers, you should get the serial ID. Likewise, you should also open device manager via Windows X shortcut key and now select device manager. From here, expand the Android phone section and make sure your phone is being shown as Android bootloader interface. Let me show you. So as you could see, the Android phone is shown as Android bootloader interface. This signifies that our PC is able to read our phone in fastboot mode. Likewise, we are also getting a serial ID. So with this, the fastboot mode has been established and you could now move ahead. So next up, you now have to temporarily boot your phone to the TWRP recovery. For that, let's first rename the file to something shorter. So let's rename it to TWRP so that the complete name becomes TWRP.IMG. 
So make sure the name is the of the output dot img and is placed inside the platform to put on the PC. Once that is done, we will now boot our phone to this recovery. So type in fastboot boot and the name of the recovery file which is twrp.img and hit enter. Our phone should now boot to the recovery. Since our phone does not have a recovery partition, that is why we are first booting our phone to this recovery and then we will flash it permanently as well. So as our as of now our phone will temporarily boot to recovery. So let's now make it permanent. So let's wait for the phone to boot to the recovery mode and as you could see it's now booted to the recovery. So let's now go to advanced and select flash current twrp and perform a right swipe to flash. With this the recovery will now be flashed onto our phone and it will now become permanent. The entire process only takes around 10 to 15 seconds. So let's wait for the time frame for the recovery to be permanent and then we'll also verify if the it's permanent or not. So it's currently flashing is done, it's currently making up a backup, it will only take a few more seconds and within 5 seconds the process is now completed. So let's now go back, again go back, now go to reboot and select recovery. Our phone should now reboot to TWRP recovery. If that happens, then it means that the recovery has been installed successfully. So let's verify the same as well. So as you could see, our phone is now booting to the TWRP recovery. So with this, the recovery has been installed successfully. So we could now easily flash the ROM using this recovery. So regarding the ROM, I would like to repeat once again, I was not able to find the official source of this ROM. I have just grabbed hold of this ROM from this Google Drive page. I don't know the source of this ROM, so please proceed ahead at your own risk. With that said, let's now flash this ROM. So you have to go to install and select the ROM file. So if you have not transferred the ROM file onto your phone, you can do so right away. So for transferring the ROM file, just copy the ROM file from here and your phone will now be visible on your PC. So simply copy paste the ROM onto your phone. If your phone is not visible here, then you could go back to the mount section and make sure to is showing as disable MTP. This, this signifies that the MTP is enabled and the data partition will also be check marked. So make sure the data is enabled and is showing as disable MTP. So this both signifies that MTP is enabled and you could then transfer the ROM file onto your phone using just the copy paste method. However, if your phone is not being shown here, then you could also use the ADB push command. So in case of ADB push command, what you have to do is simply open CMD window and type in ADB push name of the file. So let's suppose its name is rom.zip then space forward slash and SD card and with this the ROM will be then sent to the SD card which is the internal storage on your phone. So you could also use the adb push command to transfer the ROM file if your phone is not visible here. To further verify the same you could also check out my guide. I have made a guide and explain all these four methods you could refer to my guide to transfer the recovery file onto your phone. So the first one is using the USB OTG device. If you have an OTG you could use that. Then next one is using the MTP which I am using currently. But if your phone is not visible there, then you could use the ADB push command. For that, as I have told you, it's just the ADB push, name of the ROM file, space, forward slash and SD card and hit enter. Just make sure that the name of the file is rom.zip and the ROM file should currently be placed inside the platform to folder on your PC. Once that is done, it will then send the ROM file to your phone as well. And apart from that, you could also use the USB OTG cable or the MTP method. Anyways, let's now wait for the process to complete and the transfer is now going on. And it will only take a few seconds. So for flashing this ROM, you don't have to do a format data beforehand. You will have to do a format data after flashing the ROM. For other custom ROM, they require to do a format data beforehand. But for MIUI reborn ROM, you have to do a format data after flashing the ROM. So you could also transfer the ROM beforehand itself because we have to do a format data later on. Anyways, as of now, we have now transferred the ROM. So now go to install section. And as you can see, the ROM, we have got the ROM selected and perform a right swap to flash it. The flashing will now begin and it takes a quite a lot of time, around 10 minutes to 15 minutes. So let's wait for the time frame and then we'll be back. So guys, as you could see, the flashing is now complete. The entire process took around 7 to 8 minutes. So once that is done, you will now have to do a, a format data, it's compulsory and this will wipe off all the data from your phone. So go to wipe, select format data, type in yes and hit the blue check mark. It will now remove all the data from your phone and once that is done, you could now reboot your phone to the system. So just tap on reboot system and your phone will now go to the newly flashed OS. Do keep in mind that 
एम आई यू आई रिबॉन्ड रॉम टेक टू एट लॉट ऑफ टाइम टू बोट अप फॉर द फर्स्ट बोट अप बोट दी बोट एनिमेशन एज वेल एज द बोट ऑफ टाइम इज क्वाइट लेंदी एज कम्पेयर टू अदर एम आई यू आई रॉम फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई फ्लैश द जॉमी ईयू रॉम एज वेल एज दाइट गेमिंग रॉम एंड इन बोट दोज रॉम्स द बोट ऑफ टाइम वॉज क्वाइट शॉर्टर बट इन केस ऑफ एम आई यू आई रिबॉन्ड रॉम इट टेक्स क्वाइट लॉट ऑफ टाइम फॉर बोटिंग It's just for the first time setup only, but still it does take quite a lot of time. So please don't worry about that. Leave your phone in this state, and our phone should not boot in a few minutes. So let's wait for the time frame. So this is the. Boot animation of the MIUI Reborn ROM, and once again, it will get stuck at the screen for around three to four minutes. It's only for the first time usage. From subsequent usage, it will not take that much longer. So let's just wait on that boot animation, and then we'll be back. So we have just passed the boot animation, and it, it did took quite a lot of time. And now I'll have to unlock my phone by connecting to Wi-Fi, and then I'll have to activate my Mi account as well. So let me do that, and then we'll be back. So I have just added my MIU account onto this device, and you can now move ahead with the setup screen. The setup is somewhat similar to the Xiaomi EU ROM. I guess it's completely similar to the Xiaomi EU ROM or the stock MIU ROM. In fact, the entire ROM is quite similar to the stock ecosystem. Just a minute. So this is the Wi-Fi page that is somewhat different, and there are, the settings menu is somewhat different as well. But in general, you won't find anything much different from the MIUI Xiaomi EU ROM. Still, let me show you that as well. If you want to take a restore of your data, you can do so right now. I will not be doing a restore now because I have to skip this process. But if you want, please take a restore right away. And I am skipping all these steps right now. So let me just skip this as well. The setup screen, as well as the boot up and the animation, is somewhat slower than all the other ROMs which I have installed till now. This might be only for the first time users. Let me then verify it once again. As of now, I'm skipping all this initial setup screen. So let's go for the app drawer. And the setup is now complete. So the first change which you might notice is the wallpaper. And apart from that, this is the app drawer. This is the settings menu and quick setting toggles. If you go to the settings menu, you might see some a revamp settings menu. This is the search settings which you could search for, and this is the about phone section. In about mode, you could change the about phone section. As you could see, there are totally three different types of about phone section which you could choose from here. I usually keep the second one, this one. Apart from that, as you could see, there are some other options, and in the it also has a Vans micro just settings built in. So if you are using YouTube Vans or something like that, then you could make use of this section. In the additional sections, you have this Tab Plus in which you could press and hold an item with one finger to use Tab Plus. So it gives a contextual information by just long pressing on an information on an image or a text, and you could get. More information regarding that on your screen. Then, apart from that, you have floating windows. So you could bring the floating window on the sidebar and get the bubble notification as well. Then we have the memory extension, so it will swap the storage memory with the virtual RAM. So only do so if you have enough storage on your phone. So it will take around five GB or from the internal storage of your phone and allocate it as a virtual RAM if you choose five GB. So you could choose from 2 GB, 3 GB, or 5 GB. Then is the second space which allow you to create two instances of the same ROM. And there are few other tweaks here and there. So guys, on that note, I round up this video. If you have any queries, do let me know in the comment section. And guys, please like this video and subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. Thanks a lot for watching.